Hello and welcome back. Today is going to be an interesting ride because we'll be discussing the coagulation system which forms the coagulation cascade and that's secondary hemostasis and we'll be discussing the different pathways and of course the clotting factors. As a medical student, the coagulation pathway is one topic that needs you to always revisit it. So it's very okay to get the clotting factors mixed up. That's why you have to revisit it always. But in this video, I'll show you an easier way to keep them at the tip of your fingers so using a very interesting mnemonic in the course of this video. So coagulation is also known as blood clotting and it's a process that helps to stop bleeding when the blood vessels are damaged. You have a cut. So at that instant, the gush of blood is very fast. But after a while, you see that the flow of blood begins to reduce. That's the whole concept of coagulation. So we'll be discussing that shortly. So coagulation pathways refers to the complex series of biochemical reactions that leads to the formation of that blood clot. So we have two main coagulation pathways and they are the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway which eventually meets at the common pathway and at this point of meeting a fibrin clot is formed that helps to stop bleeding so it's also important to know that there are factors and proteins that are involved in this process and we'll be looking at these factors and the proteins and their functions before we look at the pathways extensively as we have 13 clotting factors but bear in mind that there is no clotting factor 6 and there are two other clotting factors that don't have numbers assigned to them the clotting factor 1 which is fibrinogen clotting factor 2 is prothrombin factor 3 is thromboplastin tissue factor factor 4 is calcium aeon we have factor 5 which is the labile factor factor 7 the stable factor factor 8 is anti-hemophilia factor factor 9 is christmas factor factor 10 is the stout proa factor Factor 11 is plasma thromboplastin antecedent. Factor 12 is Hageman factor. Factor 13 is fibrin stabilizing factor. So those ones that don't have any number assigned to them, we have um, we have precalicrine and uh, high molecular weight kinogen. And then there is this mnemonic I have. The foolish people try climbing long slopes after certain several people have fallen. We go again. Foolish people try climbing long slopes after certain several people have fallen. You just have to add the other two that we don't have any number assigned to them. Let's see the functions of these factors. Fibrinogen, is, which is factor 1, is a precursor of fibrin and fibrin is the whole end product of this whole coagulation stuff we've been talking about. So prothrombin, which is factor 2, it helps to convert fibrinogen to fibrin. Then factor 3, which is tissue factor or the thromboplastin is an initiator of the extrinsic pathway so factor four is calcium ion and calcium ion is a cofactor a cofactor is an organic or inorganic molecule that binds to an enzyme and helps to um, facilitate the catalysis of that enzyme so cofactor is simply a helping factor factor five which is the labile factor is an accelerator so we'll talk about factor 10 before we proceed factor 10 activates factor 2 and there is an accelerator that helps in this activation and that accelerator is factor 5 we said factor 5 is an accelerator so factor 5 helps to activate factor 2 by factor 10 so now factor 5 is the accelerator and factor 10 is the activator factor 7 is an activator of factor 10 from the extrinsic pathway then factor 8 accelerates the activation of factor 10 factor 9 activates factor 10 while factor 11 activates factor 9 and then factor 12 activates factor 11 and factor 13 which is the fibrin stabilizing factor helps to stabilize the fibrin sheet after it has been formed. So guys the extrinsic pathway comes to play when there is an inflammation while the intrinsic pathway is as a result of a damage to the blood vessels. So let's see the various pathways now and the factors that are peculiar to all of them. The intrinsic pathway starts with the activation of factor 12. So factor 12 activates factor 11 and factor 11 activates factor 9. So factor 9 in the presence of a cofactor and an accelerator, those cofactors are calcium and factor 8. They now activate factor 10. The extrinsic pathway comes to play when there is an inflammation of, of the tissue. So the first factor that is activated here is the tissue factor which is factor 3. So factor 3 activates factor 7 and factor 7 then activates factor 10. 
So remember that even the intrinsic pathway also activated factor 10. So it's at that point where the both activated factor 10. That's the point where we call the common pathway. That's where the common pathway starts from at the point where factor 10 is already activated. So then factor 10 will activate factor 2 and factor 2 will activate factor 1. And factor 1 is fibrinogen, which is then activated to its activated form, which is fibrin. And fibrin sheets, take note, fibrin sheet is the end product of the whole coagulation pathways. And that fibrin sheet that has been formed will now form the clot, which then totally stops the bleeding. And then the whole goal of hemostasis has been established. Um, it's very important to know the various factors that are peculiar to each pathways. So guys, that's that about the coagulation system, which is the secondary hemostasis. In our next video, we'll be talking about the fibrinolytic pathway. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please do well to leave it in the comment section and I will answer them. Please do well to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below, turn on the notification bell if you haven't, and stay curious and keep learning till I come your way next time.